Um, hi, I'm Stefan Bergmann from Red Hat. Um, and uh, enjoying to kind of uh, misuse the LibreOffice code base as a test bed for cool compiler features. And uh, that's what I'll talk about today. So, um, just to get one misconception out of the way right at the start, the compiler wants to be your friend. Uh, so, even if it spits incomprehensible 15 line error messages at you, um, what it actually wants to tell you is, uh, I love you, I, I want to hug you, uh, maybe hug you to death. Um, <laughs> but that's what it actually um, wants to tell you, and, and you have to treat the compiler that way, and you'll have a good relation, uh, a fruitful relation with it. Um, so, compilers, uh, C++ compilers, in the case of the LibreOffice code base mainly, um, they have uh, changed quite a bit over the last years for various reasons. Um, the C++ standard itself is evolving, is getting better. Um, then there's some healthy um, um, different compilers that uh, try to, to, to each be the best one in the field. So some healthy competition going on between GCC and Clang, for example, when Clang started to appear on the scene. Um, it's uh, better error messages, for example. Um, it's also better um, diagnostics that go beyond simple error messages. Um, warnings, um, the, the way you can plug new features into these compilers, new tests, that you write yourself specific to your project at hand, testing things that are not generic, but rather specific to LibreOffice, for example. Um, then there's also the, the dynamic side of things, that the compilers um, introduce features that at runtime um, do checks uh, and, and find even more things that are not feasible to be found through static analysis at link time and build time. And um, for both of these kinds of, of checks, static and dynamic lens, um, besides the compilers themselves, there's also various tools, um, standalone tools, that offer such features different, with different uh, feature sets in, in various cases. And some of them are, are also built on top of the compilers. Um, so I'll split this some, somewhat into two uh, to static and to dynamic parts. Um, and to start off with a, kind of a success story that we had in the LibreOffice code base with the leveraging the tools that are available to us um, is this uh, override feature. So in C++, you can have virtual functions that override other virtual functions declared in the base classes. Um, and um, originally, C++ didn't give you a clue for a given function declaration in a class, whether it was actually intended to override some other one, or whether it was to introduce a genuine new one, um, maybe with the same name as another one, but with a different set of parameters. So, when it comes to the LibreOffice code base, um, there are really huge and also very broad hierarchies of, of uh, classes. And uh, if you look at one instance of a, of a function declaration somewhere in that hierarchy, you have no idea whether it will be feasible to, for example, change one of the parameters, change its type, um, and whether then you would break all the code um, because you would introduce a new virtual function that does not override, no longer override its parent and is no longer overridden by its uh, subclasses. Um, so we always um, stay clear of, of these, of, of cleaning up things like that and uh, rather try to work around it than to dare introduce 
about their regression. Um, so comes along C++11, which now has the feature that you can optionally um, mark an overriding virtual function with a, with a keyword override. And at compile time, if it then does not actually override something from a base class, because you mistyped, for example, one of the parameters and actually introduced uh, an, an overload instead of an override, uh, then it will produce a compile error. So um, this is a rather easy thing to implement, so no wonder most of the compilers um, that are around today um, do understand that feature, mostly because in the case of um, the Microsoft compiler, it has some uh, own idea of, of how the feature should actually look. Come back to that. Um, <clears throat> but the feature is optional, so you're not forced to write it onto your function. So we're back at square one where we started. As long as it is optional, um, we don't know whether it is missing in a place, um, so we still have no idea whether we can change the actual function um, that we're staring at. So. Um, I wrote a, a, a plugin for the Clang compiler to actually complain or uh, produce an error if an overriding virtual function is not actually marked with that override. We cannot use the, the real override keyword, but we have to hide it behind a macro cell override for the few compilers that still don't understand it, which is mostly um, the very old GCC on the very old um, Mac baseline, which we'll drop anyway. Can you? I just wonder, will it make sense to actually have one more uh, kind of keyboard uh, that would say, I am a method that I would like to be overridden? Uh, the use case is that I just like uh, the parameters in some, some function and uh, forget to, of course, like, do, not, uh, do not add the cell override because I forgot to that. Uh, so like, if we knew that uh, like, all the functions that are supposed to be overridden would have to be also like, you know, tagged by to be overridden, that it would help us to use these cases. Like, I'm sure, like, um, if, 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 the, if that one needs to be overridden, then you can mark it as pure. Yeah, but you can make a function pure and also have an implementation for it. Oh, okay, sorry. So that, that <laughs> case is covered. But there's other cases. Um, there's also a final keyword, and then there was uh, interest um, to also have the negative of that one. So a final means you cannot override that one, um, but not final would be the same one as needs to be. No, uh, um, I think. Um, I'm not sure, there once was a, a proposal um, after this went into the standard to, to also add the negations, not with, a, with an exclamation mark, not override and not final. And I'm not sure what became of that proposal and whether it actually made any sense, but somebody must have had similar thoughts. But I, I guess that it would be covered by the making it pure. But, but if we find uses for, for something like that, we could, of course, write a plugin to decorate the functions with, with some some macro that we invent and check for that. Actually, actually the pure version of it will not cover the case I was interested in. Okay, we can uh, like talk about it later yeah. or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, would it make sense to, instead of writing the cell underscore override in some place, just to write override, and if the compiler doesn't understand override, to define it as a macro with an empty content? Uh, yeah, that, that would have been possible as well, but it's always uh, kind of cleaner to, to make it sure that you're actually using macros because using macros is uh, confusing already, so better be, be very clear about what you're doing there and not try to be too clever. Um, but yeah, it could, could have been done that way as well. Um, yeah, so 
Um, with that uh, plugin in place, um, the, this uh, plugin was written in a case that it also rewrote all the places uh, that, that uh, missed it because that was a really huge patch. Nobody would have wanted to write that by hand. Um, so touched virtually every um, file in, in the code base and, and added uh, these SAL overrides into various places there. Um, and with that out of the way, um, we had a status quo where every overriding virtual function was now marked with that um, SAL override. Newly introduced code would bark if you forgot it. And uh, if you actually looked at one of the, the functions and wondered, does it override or does it not override, um, you just need to look at the declaration now and see whether it has the cell override keyword uh, next to it and now can make um, guided decisions uh, on, that, on that information and, and actually change things that you wouldn't have dared change in the past. So, um, some more information on these plank plugins. Well, already had a lightning talk on it earlier, um, and here and, and Lubos actually did much of the work. Lubos started the original framework that we're using there. Um, no wrote many tests or many plugins, uh, and writing such a plugin is really easy because all you need to do is copy an existing one, um, place it in this one directory, and the next time you build, it'll be built automatically and included in the compiler. So all the source files that you then compile will include that check. And one of the features um, of, of Clang, or that, that made Clang popular, is that this interface to write plugins is rather easy uh, to use um, compared, for example, to the to the GCC one, which is out there much longer, but always had a kind of reputation of being very hard um, to write plugins for. So this one has a learning curve that, of course, has some form of a curve, um, but shouldn't be too too hard. And especially with the ones we already have, um, shouldn't be too hard for each of you to to write one more plugin. Think of something that you want to find out in the code. For example, examples of what we have is, for example, that we, for all these cell info, cell one stuff that needs um, some, some string tag, what, what area of code it belongs to, that there's a plugin that checks that all these tags are actually uh, consistent and not mistyped and not everybody invents new tags, but instead looks at the surrounding code, which tags are already in use, so that there is some some consistency for that. Um, then there's um, plugins that helped in changing from this uh, old cell rule type def to in places where it can be used, actually use the, the C++ bool. Um, bad mixtures between cell rules and, and uh, integer literals, for example. Um, other cases also like this uh, replacing of um, string arguments with uh, const references and, and, and lots more like we have about 20 last time I looked. Um, w once we get too many we'll maybe slow down the, the um, compiler too much because each of these plugins um, in, in effect is a, is a full um, traversal of the, the syntax tree so when we have too many of them, it might slow down noticeably the compiler and we'll need to think about uh, optimizing the, the framework or throwing away the ones that are outdated or move them to the attic or, or something like that. Um, but for now, try it out. Um, the next step then, up the ladder, as I said, for the cell override thing, you don't want to add that in all these places. So the cool thing is um, these plugins can also magically rewrite your code um, while they operate on it. <clears throat> this is more tricky to, to write and get right and get working, especially um, in the face of macros, 
where you want not only to um, change occurrences in, in arguments to macros, but also in definitions of macros, or you don't, don't want to do that, um, or the, the, um, the case that, uh, of course, will not be covered is where um, part of the thing you want to rewrite comes from different uh, parts of macro arguments that are sort of assembled into something where there's no, no single place in the code that you could, could uh, change um, to have the, have the same effect. Um, and you can even run multiple of them in parallel. I had that with the, with the salt rule changes and that gives you a really spooky feeling if, uh, if you start, you compile and then see how, how it uh, changes your source files um, and, and, and uh, when you compile again it, it even still works and it didn't use other garbage. Um, there is one other approach that people, uh, some people in France, this, this Cochinelle thing um, looks very promising. Um, the idea there is um, to rewrite um, patterns in the code, um, declare these patterns in the way of, of patches. Like if, for example, we wanted to get rid of all superfluous parentheses around return arguments, um, you could write a patch with a, like, like a typical diff patch um, and then run, that's a standalone tool, uh, run that one on the code um, but last time I tried at least, uh, it, it, it didn't understand very well the C++ uh, syntax, so, so it didn't produce useful results there. Um, I think they uh, initially aimed at the Linux kernel C um, and are actually used there, but maybe they grow to a, a state um, where they can be useful for us too, because that's a, a nice idea if you think about it, of, of how to to, to specify in a very high level way um, patterns you want to rewrite. Um, as I said, there's also um, standalone tools um, out there, quite a lot of them. Um, quite a lot of them that we, or, or some that we, or people in the community actively um, work with. Um, and turns out that all of them um, find um, not completely overlapping um, instances in the source code that are nice to clean up. Um, the thing is that uh, comparable to, to how we uh, cleaned up the, the, all the compiler warnings one in the source code, which was a heroic effect, uh, effort um, to get the whole base um, warning free, um, but you need these heroic effects to make these uh, tools actually um, effective because if you still have uh, thousands of, of, of warnings they regularly generate, you don't find three new warnings they generate that you newly introduce with your new code. So to have these tools effective, um, you need to have a clean, clean set, slate at one time to start from. And um, for example, for Coverti, as uh, Quellen told earlier, um, we have now a state um, where we have very few remaining old warnings. Um, so can can start to use it now. There's also the CPP check. Um, Julian Nabe um, is, uh, regularly uh, produces patches that fix things in there. Um, there's a Clang static analyzer. Um, I personally never looked into that, um, but it's also um, useful. Um, the next thing on, the, on, on our plate to look at is um, C++11. Um, as I said, the, the override feature is one example um, where there's useful stuff that we could, could actually use in our code base. Um, not all of these features are of the kind that um, you can hide them behind macros for those compilers that don't understand them. Um, so, um, what we need to do or what we plan to do is uh, bump our baseline requirements to something where all the compilers 
that we then will use uh, have a sufficiently large subset of C++11 available. Um, what that means is um, that for the TDF baseline Linux builds on, on CentOS 5, um, there is some, that one is still on a GCC compiler that would be too old, but there is some uh, tooling to um, compile there with a newer compiler and the missing parts of the lib standard C++ are statically linked into the resulting executables and, and libraries so that you can st even run that on, a, on an old uh, baseline machine. So that is a uh, solution for that one for Mac. Um, we'll just drop the, the, the old uh, pre-10, 10.8 um, machines and be on a clang, uh, on an Apple clang there that is, is new enough. Um, the poor one uh, is a Microsoft compiler. Uh, even the um, MSVC 12 uh, it does have a number of, of uh, C++11 features but there is still some that it does not get, like for example deleted functions it does not support, which is a shame because it's not, not really something that should be too difficult, especially the, the easy parts of it. Um, it does not have variadic templates, but it would be good to have functions that forward all their arguments, arbitrary numbers of arguments, uh, to some, some other function, like uh, we have some, some kinds of wrapper functions for which that would make uh, we could make good use of that. Uh, and also for this override feature, it has a very funny bug that if you also include the inline keyword um, in your uh, declaration, function declaration, um, then it'll complain that you cannot combine inline and override, which is total nonsense, but uh, <laughs> that's one of the things where you have to tweak your, your code. Um, the other thing that we'll um, need to think about is what to do with the, with the URE, URE, the, the UNO interface um, for, for, for the client code. So if some, some external um, developer wants to write an extension um, that, um, and, and wants to write that on, on an old baseline machine, for example, so that it, it is guaranteed to work with all all uh, Linux uh, LibreOffice instances. Um, then, if in in the in the headers uh, for the uh, URE um, we would make use of uh, C++11 features, we would force that person to also update to the specific um, uh, compiler, for example. So one idea might be that in a first step um, we'll leave all the headers that make up the URE. Um, out of, of uh, pimping them up with C++11 features. Um, maybe we should just start in the coming weeks of, of using in the, in the meat of the code above the URI features and then we would see the, the tinder boxes that break and are on, on two old compilers still and, and, and update that. Um, so our idea is to, for the um, 4.4 LibreOffice version, um, to kiss goodbye the old um, compilers that are no longer capable or not capable enough and go ahead with, with uh, making use of C++11 features like for example lambdas um, that's a useful feature uh, to clean up lots of lots of places in the code um, and when you want to do actual C++11 development um, Scott Myers is, is active as well, having written a new book on, on uh, all the shitty corner cases that is still completely arcane and broken, even in the new standard. So I recommend reading that before writing any, any new line of code. Um, some dynamic features. Um, there is one cool dynamic feature that grew over the last years and um, first started out as an addition to Clang, um, stemming from Google, uh, and, and then also got added to GCC. So that's something that is available 
in a more or less complete or evolving states in both of these compilers at least, um, that is these sanitizers that at compile time the code is instrumented with checks um, that at runtime then will tell you um, if you do something uh, illegal. Like there's one sanitizer for, um, for things uh, about uh, addressing for uh, out of bounds if you write beyond an array or read beyond an array, be it a static array, a, a heap array, a, a stack array, um, it can even detect uses of, of stacked um, functions uh, or stack variables after after return. So when you return a pointer to a stack uh, variable and might modify that afterwards, it can find that out. It uses huge amount of shadow memory to track what actual memory is in what state. So it requires quite um, some RAM. Um, but all of our, if you run make check and run all of the checks, um, it is completely clean by now. So so passes. There is also a leak detector included there, and uh, that one does not pass. Yeah. So Moggy had some did some work on it, cleaning up some of the leaks, but there's still uh, lots left that people can pick up and look into. Um, another of these uh, sanitizers that are available there is the undefined sanitizer that um, tries to track or find occurrences of all the, whenever the standard says that some operation is undefined behavior, uh, it, it'll try to track those down. Like when you have uh, signed integer overflows, um, which is often the case when you when you do a computation of hash sums for, for unordered sets, uh, then lots of the um, functions are using signed instead of unsigned integers. So I went into many of the places also in the external code and, and uh, added simple fixes there to, to switch to unsigned, for which overflow uh, is well defined. Um, other, other thing that it finds is if you call a function through a pointer to a different and, and, the, and the function argument types don't match up. Um, I found lots of cases there, most of them were harmless, um, where some function was supposed to, get it to, to, re, to receive a void pointer, uh, but it was written to receive uh, a foo pointer, but in, in the other case would static has to the foo pointer anyway afterwards uh, because it was, would always be called with the foo pointer. Um, the, the one cool thing that it does is um, that it catches all the, the downcasts, uh, the, the invalid downcasts, where you do a static cast from foo down to bar, but um, in reality at runtime what you have is not a bar but is only a foo. Um, so something, a, a dynamic cast would, uh, it would uh, catch, but dynamic casts are much more expensive. So many places that think they know what kind of, of, of object you have and that it is safe to, to cast down, um, they use a, a static cast or a C-style cast. And um, this one finds all the, uh, the places where we do the wrong assumptions. Um, and I'm, I'm currently uh, going through all the, the CPB unit tests and trying to clean that up, but there's so many um, cases in the code, uh, error reports of the code, and this is really um, a hard labor. And from the about 180, I have only covered 100, like 150 by now. There's also some technical problems involved there with making sure that the the, the, the RITI that is necessary for tracking down these uh, wrong casts, for example, um, that, that is available um, despite our uh, visibility uh, hiding of, of, of uh, symbols at um, dynamic library boundaries. And uh, it looks like we need to sprinkle a lot of the code with uh, some new uh, macro that I introduced to um, for the case that you're compiling with this checker that it then emits um, symbols 
with uh, higher visibility than in the normal case. Um, there was also a problem with running the junior tests against the sanitizers on Clang because of missing symbols. Um, but with the help of Michael at the hack night, I finally got that one fixed. So one more case where it's easier to run these tests out of the box now. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Time's up. No questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, it has somewhat more, but also not complete. So what I, I what what I base this on is um, the the Clang people. They also decided to um, move forward and use C plus plus eleven, and um, they settled on um, some Clang and, and, C, and, and GCC versions and on uh, MSVC twelve. So I, I thought that would be a sweet spot. They. I, I, outsourced, uh, so to speak, the, the, the decision-making and hope that they would have made good decisions. There's also some metrics uh, on some Apache website where they do claim, for example, that uh, MSVC 12, uh, 12 does support the variated templates, though it doesn't. So, um, And I saw on the claim code they also have this problem that they still cannot use that feature even after their switch to C++11. So I assume that the 13 one isn't there yet either.